Oof, my leg. Killer. Okay. Let's start this off. <sighs> Hello and welcome to this very special class on the monads. I am Reverend Sherry and I will be teaching you today. A little about me, I am finishing my third degree with the Korean nativist tradition. It's the very same tradition that runs Witch School Online. I've been with the tradition since 2004 and have many other lessons under my belt besides the core degree work. As a third degree, we have several projects we must complete, one of them being to teach public classes. The class will be recorded, so please turn off all gestures, spankers, microphone, anything that would interrupt. Thank you so much. There will be times throughout the class I will check to see if you have any questions, so please be sure to write them down at home so you don't forget to ask them. Uh, typically I wait about the last 10 or 15 minutes of the class time. Um, so this way we could get through this material. In the Karelian tradition, they have their own definition or idea of the Inyad. As you may know, the Inyad is a group of creators. Numero numerologically speaking, the number nine is the last number before going back to one or the source. Nine is also three times three. So three times three is the number of manifestation, which is nine. However, we are not talking about numerology today, but the understanding of what a monad is, how we come from them, and how to find the one that we resonate. If you have ever read the Vangelo de Strega dictated to Charles Godfrey Leland by an Italian witch, Aradia, then this concept will come easy to you. The book is also entitled Aradia, the Gospel of the Witches, first published in 1899. It, it is a creation story in allegorical terms, describing how everything came to be. The primordial goddess was once both goddess and god within, all potentially existing, sleeping. Once her curiosity stirred her, she, and she split from him, uh, from herself then was the god and the goddess. And then she saw how beautiful he was. He was made of light, and so she wanted him back. She spoke to her higher self, interesting, she had a higher self of her own, and was told in order to come together with him, she must become human. This is described as falling through the seven planes. Each plane becomes denser. As the energy slows, this is what happens. And so we have the physical world. She split herself into nine monads and sent them into the physical world. A monad has been also termed oversoul and group soul. In 1841, Ralph Waldo Emerson wrote his first essays on this very subject. Originally a New England preacher, he left that path to pursue writing, lecturing, poetry, and led, led the transcendent Transcendentalist, transcendentalist movement. There's one of those words, people. I told you don't no, use it. You can't pronounce it. I just did it. Shame on me. His belief was that divinity lived within us. In his writing, he states that we know that all spiritual being is in the man. The group soul, <coughs> excuse me, is the many souls from the same group. These people will incarnate and help each other along during their lifetimes. Sometimes it will be a brief meeting and other times they will be close friends 
her family members. It is said that they can often read each other's minds, finish sentences, and even share dreams. They are essentially cut from the same, quote, cloth, which is an energetic, energetic fabric. The fabric or cloth is the same frequency, and since everyone in the group resonates on the same frequency, your abilities to sense, think, and share is much stronger. I will now pass out an image that would give you a better idea of what I'm talking about. This is the one I have up here, but you might want it for yourself. And even though it is a rudimentary chart, you can see how the description fits in here. Okay. Sharing with everyone near me. If you can't open it, it's fine. It's on the screen. Each monad is a snapshot of a time, a moment in time, <clears throat> but not as we know it. Each one of the monads is a microcosm of the goddess, with each one having the same potentiality and personality of her, but at the specific moment in creation. I know this sounds complicated, and it will become clearer, trust me. For clarity's sake, let us say Monad number one was created at 12 noon, and this is who she was at 12 noon. Monad number two is the goddess at 12.01 p.m., and number three created at 12.02 p.m., each one unique and similar to the previous one, but not exactly. The same will go for four through nine. Each minute brings experience and through analysis, cognitive awareness happens. Now remember, this is the goddess and that she has the ability to do all these things in septoseconds. So it is very possible that it is the way it happened. However, time is not as important as other factors, which I will tell you. Each monad has its own existence, which is independent of it on its own. Each monad has come to represent the natural process of things and the way things proceed in any situation. First, I will digress to tell you that Pythagoras had the same idea of the Ennead, only in a number format. Okay, back to the monads. So, each monad had all of the original goddess, just their own individual existence. But now, they each were able to split themselves into millions of souls. This explains why there are so many people <clears throat> who have a similar trait, but are yet still unique. They each have characteristics of their monad, but also have the potentiality and walk their own path with each choice they make. Before we go into the nine monads in detail, does anyone have any need of clarification on what we've covered so far? Please type in chat. Anyone? No? Okay. Wonderful. I'll continue then. I'm now, I'm now going to give you handouts which I've already sent out early. Uh, I believe you all have them. And I created those for you so that you can see the key attributes to the monads and follow along. You may want to create a note card for yourself, take notes, or write it on the blank lines that I left on those handouts uh, so you can enter your own revelation. And now we are at the first monad. 
the first monad uh, to attempt to enter the physical world was trying to make sense of it all. She had to digest this new experience, which was far into her. Her focus was trying to figure out how to relate to it. She is all about structure, theories, forms, and was the one who explained to spirit so that it could understand and create patterns for the use of interacting with this world. This monad had completed the task and could not further herself. Souls that came out of this first monad are strong on how things should work, not as successful with follow through, but mm. still they have a strong focus. Concepts are easy for them as well as arranging and creating patterns. They just cannot put the patterns into action and adapt to the circumstances. They are thinkers but are not easily adaptable at changing their opinions or adapting to new concepts. They excel in leading in morality, philosophy, and legal matters. They are strong to stick to their ideals and can be unforgiving of those who do not follow the same ideals. Passively, they are inspiring in a moral way, but not really good at actively utilizing morality in a structured way when called upon doing so. These challenges for the first monad souls can be difficult when they seek to move forward on any of their ideas. The second monad. The second monad came into being when the goddess saw that the first monad had gotten stuck and could not move forward. She came for the purpose of helping the first monad to get out of the ditch that she got stuck in, focusing on the patterns. Second monad was able to analyze the patterns and put them into action. She had a practical understanding, but yet would not take action unless the first monad gave permission to do so. The first monad saw that the second monad was helping, but saw it as taking over her power and not as help, and thus would not give that need of permission as long as she felt that the permission was needed. So the second monad was now stuck waiting on the first monad to give her that permission to use the practical and to put it into action. Second monad souls are loyal, nurturing, and protective. They are analytical and are practical, but defer to others on what they should do and when they should make a move. And they are really great at planning things in the long range aspect and creating practical systems. These souls often leave the, the leading up to others and become assistants. So they're not leaders, they're assistants. Not quite followers, but not quite leaders. If they can overcome deferring their creations and ideas to others, they can be highly effective. It is said that they have a tendency to become bitter and angry later on as their perfect systems are no longer under their ability to control. We're at the third monad. And the third monad was created to help the goddess move forward toward her desire by giving incentive, aka putting a fire under her butt, to the first monad. Third monad took the first monad's abstract ideas and practical applications of the second monad and actually put them into action. Her focus is experience, growth, expansion and practical application in an active way. With the third monad, Goddess begins to see her desire of the physical come to fruition and realization. The 
third monad is inventive, brilliant, hardworking, and energetic. And the souls that come from her are persuasive and communicate very well. They can make something popular, but not have the original idea. Although, they may be original in how they do this. So they can be very creative and how to market the idea, but not necessarily have the original idea. So they take what others have been unable to make successful or useful, and they create a new way to use it. The fourth monad came into being so goddess could expand her understanding of the experience in new ways. Her function is to understand the monads and their multitude of manifestations or plainly put to explore the patterns between the monads themselves. Fourth monad is responsive and reacting with feelings or the senses as where the other three were impartial in their assessments using just fact. This monad is all about the emotions and the patterns of relating to others. She looks within and her inward reaction to external events. Fourth monad creates patterns that add depth to experience. Souls from the fourth monad are highly emotional, creative, and perceptive, responding quickly and positively. Many of these souls are artists, highly expressive people with an all-or-nothing demeanor. You know, a YOLO type. <laughs> you only live once. YOLO. They are reactive by nature, and their weak point is that their cause and effect understanding is not too strong. They live in the now burning with passion for the moment. They do not always think of their consequences and can be self-centered. Once they form an emotional connection to something good or bad, they do not let go, and changing their minds is near to impossible. If they grasp objectivity, they can utilize the emotional nature they have to have a deeper understanding of others' needs. We are basically halfway through here. We can see the progression more so now of these monad creations. We can also see the tie in of the natural progression of human soul and life. Think of a baby and how they assess the world through the years. First, everything goes in their mouth and then everything gets thrown, especially the spaghetti. <coughs> How great is it that we are a piece of the goddess still doing the very same we have done from our inception? I would say that she's still experiencing through us at soul level. Each monad is our higher self, which is still the goddess. Are we all good here? Everybody hanging in there? Okay, awesome sauce. All right. Good to hear. The fifth monad. The fifth monad was needed to understand the patterns themselves and to gain that understanding. It was the goal of the fifth monad to not only understand the patterns, but to gain control in manipulating them. This is why we still, hold on, sorry. <coughs> this is why we will see patterns repeat but at a different frequency the souls emanating from this monad seem to be detached and introverted from its experiences it will constantly update its attachments as its understandings change these souls are passionate about understanding but not so much about the experiences
the sixth monad, she was needed to put the fifth monad's knowledge into action in a practical way. The fifth monad had studied from a distance and still was not close enough to engage physically and apply what she had learned. She is more likely to a scientist in her approach to things, creating and experiencing relationships in a good way by applying the patterns and constantly improving them. Her nature is loving, nurturing, and protective, and places her relationships above herself and commits great self-sacrifice. She goes above and beyond to create a safe haven for those she cares for as well as for herself. She thoroughly enjoys doing this as she craves peace and harmony, going to any means necessary to achieve that goal. Six Monad does have expectations from her relationships though, and can get pretty upset when they do not go that way. She will blame the situation instead of reassessing her expectations. Her protective nature can also become more of a paranoia and have smothering conditions of those she loves and protects. Each monad came forward uh, and deity had experience physically through them and in turn through this experience was changed. We know that experience uh, from our perspective is changed when we experience and thus it is the same for deity as well. It is this which she based the next monad on when creating them. Hence necessity is the mother of all invention and each monad then affected the one previous creating a progressive and continuous evolution of existence. We are at number seven. The seventh monad was created in order to appreciate the differences, embracing individuality, and to love uniqueness. This is something that sixth monad could not do and ultimately set deity back from the lack of revising her expectations. This monad loves surprises <clears throat> Sorry, and spontaneous experiences. She has the ability to take things as they come. She is optimistic by nature and sees that the nature of things are always good. She accepts things for what they are and accepts their natural state, never seeking to change them. She holds an extreme fondness for difference between things and studies them with wonder. Even though things have differences, through her studies she finds the similarities within them. This understanding is the highest understanding of the nature of existence. Loyalty and devotion are the hallmarks of this monad and her greatest strength yet also her greatest weakness. She lacks judgment, blindly accepting things the way they are, and in turn being oblivious to good or bad effects. She is too enchanted by the individual characteristics to see the whole picture. This lack of discernment is what led to the creation of the eighth monad. Eighth monad, she's all about order, process, and focus. She is realistic, rational, and sensible, and very goal-oriented. Remember that she has all the good aspects of the previous, but this monad also imposes order on her environment. She loves communication and interaction. Relationships are important but she runs into controlling them, which brings her issues. Her desire for order and structure, thus improving existence 
is muddled by the control factor and she will even go to the point of being manipulative in order to obtain that order and control. She loves power and the trappings of it, that she will impose herself any way she can. She is, however, a trailblazer, loving new situations, information, and doing things no one has done before. She thrives on conflict and argument, finding competition as her way of finding answers to situations. Souls of this monad seem very heavy-handed and controlling. They do not think of the damage their conflict may cause. This is why the ninth monad was created, as this attribute was devastatingly not helpful in moving forward. Ninth monad, which is last but not the least of all, by any stretch of the imagination. She's a builder and an organizer. She too likes order, but does so in a more refined and diplomatic way. She utilizes all of the best qualities of the other monads in order to achieve the effect of working order. Innovative, she is very innovative and likes new forms, but is flexible enough to adapt the forms when it's needed. She loves others as they are and appreciates uniqueness and holds discernment and judgment of the individual differences. She's a peacemaker and resolves op oppositions easily as she loves creating harmony. In the instance that she cannot create harmony, she has the ability to rise above the disharmony. The souls from this monad seek to transcend limiting situations. The nine monads can be seen as a process or steps in creation, and this can be applied to finding solutions to conflict and answers to questions. The pattern is then to conceive, nurture, pursue, develop, study, admire, apply, establish, and resolve. Applying these techniques is reflecting that of the motto of the great Hermes Trigamestis, as above, so below. And I want to I did not think of this when I was writing this, and this was two years ago, but I want to put this in local chat for you so you can see these pattern steps to finding solutions to conflict and answers to questions. Now it's time for me to put you all on the spot. We have an activity. Um, we could take this slow because I know I went through it and so you may, may or may not have the key point notes. Um, if you'd like me to hand you those, I can do so now. Um, so you could take a look at those. I have one note card. The one note card will give you all of the pictures of all the handouts. You just have to pull them up out of the note card. Okay, there's Dia and Tux. Okay, and Plum. Welcome, Plum, by the way. All right. There you go. You're welcome. Now, on each of these handouts, I have your key notes. You're welcome, Tech. Um, and what we're going to do is, now that we've gone through them, I'm going to give you some time to browse through all of the key notes of each of the monads, which there's nine of them, so that's going to take some time. And 
go through them and see which one you most relate to. Okay? And then I'll call out, you know, one through nine. And if you feel that you relate with that monad, you just type a yes or a Y. Just type Y. It's even easier than yes. Okay. So <clears throat> I'm going to give us about t 10 minutes and see if you guys can relate to one of the monads because, as I said, we are supposedly um, one of the millions of souls from one of the nine monads. So, timer starting now. No, Toshiha, please keep going as we go through the handout uh, for about nine more minutes. And we're looking to see which one we relate to. This is an intentional pause in the program on the video.
just letting you know that we have about five minutes more. Come on. We have about three minutes left until the activity comes to an end and we will go through our results. Okay, <clears throat> time is up for that portion there, the activity portion, as far as reading and assessing uh, which monad might be yours. So, 
We're almost at question and answer time. Can it wait uh, just a few more minutes at all? Yeah. Okay. So what I want to do is is that I want to go through each monad number one through nine, and if you feel that you relate to that monad uh, and you might be a part of that group soul, please just type Y for yes, and then once we get through them, we can do as long of a question and answer time as you like. Okay? All right. So we have monad number one. Does anybody feel that they are from that group soul? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? No one? No one feels that they're from monad number one? <coughs> Now be proud of your monad. There's nothing wrong with any of these monads. Okay. Uh, monad number two. Okay, Melissa says yes. Are you going to say something? Um, I, no. The only reason you can't is because uh, once they split the souls from themselves, they were essentially the creator of that group. Is that, was that your question that you were trying to ask me? Yeah, no. In this, in this theory, okay, this is a theory. This is not hard scientific proof. Uh, like anything that we do, it's considered pseudoscience. Uh, and it's a theory. So, no, because they came off of one specific monad, uh, they would not be a part of one. But they do progress, and they do have attributes of the previous. <laughs> so, therefore, it might seem like you could be more than one. Okay. So, we've got one number, two monad. How about number three? Anyone from number three? Number three? No? Okay. Uh, number four. Does anybody relate to this monad? Plum does. Okay, and Dia. Cool. How about number five? Anyone with number five? Okay, Julian is saying yes to number five. Number five alive. <laughs> yes. Well, you kind of do have to just, just for the fun of it. <laughs> number six. Do we have anybody who relates to number six? Maybe that's their monad. Okay, Plum, hurry back. Tut says yes, she can relate to number six. Number seven? Shauna says yes, number seven. Anyone else say yes to number seven? No. Number eight. <laughs> Julian. Number seven, kind of too. Okay. Breaks the rules. Oh. You have three of them too, Ted? Hmm. Yeah, no, it's it's really one. Um but if you kind of, you, you want to look for the one that you have the most attributes of. And they all have the attributes of each other, 
because well, they're the same person essentially, they're derived from the same person. Um, but you want the most attributes. So we have, did what I did in number eight yet? I don't even know. Number eight? Any hardcore? Yes, number eight, that's me. No? I think there's gonna be a lot of questions at the end of this. This is not an easy subject, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, anybody with number nine? Number nine. <laughs> okay, Julian. Julian versus the urge to say yes to Ima. Of course, I'm incredibly involved, so easily. She is a number nine. I feel like I'm a number nine, too. And like I said, this is a terribly hard subject. Um, I'm sure that, you know, I don't know, maybe the founder of the tradition would be able to do a better job at this class, but. He's not here. I am. So, okay, wonderful. Thank you for participating in this complicated activity. I will now open the floor to questions and answers that will fall into the scope of the class. Then I will wrap it up. How's that sound? Um, if you want to open your mic for it, please feel free to do so. If you want to text, same thing. Toshiha, I need you to uh, open up your second live voice, please. Uh -huh. Okay, not too much, because you, you know, I'll, I'll kill it. And we'll do it. <laughs> yeah, okay. Who's going to raise their hand first? I mean, you raising hands in the chairs, I'll have to scoop out here. See what we're doing. Anyone? Ainsley? Nope, that's Shauna. Sorry. Wrong blonde. Go ahead, Shauna. Well, if you're not drawn to any of them, um, you, maybe you're an alien. <laughs> uh, I, I have no answer for that. I just, uh, like I said, we're supposed to come from one of the nine monads. Um, I, I don't believe that you know, we're the only creations in the universe. So who knows? Maybe we'll have some kind of scientific proof of that soon. I hope. That'd be nice. Maybe you're not one of the monads. Maybe you're, I don't know, maybe you're a fairy or, I don't know. Anyone else? Mm -hmm. I, I found it easier to see other people. Fair enough. Fair enough. It is hard to just judge yourself, isn't it? Because either you're extremely critical or you're extremely <laughs> biased, uh, and you can't really see as other people would see you. Any comments? Any more questions? Or did this concept was this too hard? You think? I mean, it was hard for me. So, I don't think that it was hard. I think that it was new. So, and in listening to it, I enjoyed hearing hearing it and the breakdown. Do you know what I mean? Like I, I, yes. I've never heard it before, so it was interesting because it was something new to add to my knowledge. Cool. Okay. Thank you, Dia. <laughs> no, no questions, no comments from anyone else. Somebody who hasn't said anything, you can text it. It's cool. My question. Oh, sorry, who's that? 
Hi, Melissa. Go ahead, Melissa. Thank you. So I strongly resonated with um, number two. Am I supposed to be happy in that? Or am I supposed to be, that's really kind of early on. Am I supposed to be aspiring to be further along? I think that to know yourself is to be able to do better. Yeah. So if you know that, you know, I don't know, you're cranky and when you're cranky, you know, you lash out at others. Um, you, when you don't know that, you don't have a responsibility for your actions. So therefore you, you just keep pissing people off. Um, but when you do know responsibly that, you know, you can say, okay, well, this is the time when I'm cranky and when I'm around people, I piss them off and they walk away and I never see them again, then you can maybe, you know, control that aspect of yourself and know when to um, not go around people when you're really cranky or whatever. Um, I don't know if that's a good analogy, uh, but they're all important and they're all part of the goddess. So, you know, you, you look for the strengths, you look for the weaknesses. Um, and, and when you look at this whole entire theory of the monads, you see that she didn't even evolve without having to figure it all out. You know, she was up there, she was the way she was, and there was a whole different way of evolving and just to become human um, so she could get with him um, because he wasn't going to come back into her. So you just kind of like, well, okay, so I'm here and so now what do I do with this? So you, it's not a bad thing at all. I mean, there's, you know, you have second monad souls are loving, nurturing, and protective. Um, they're analytical and they're practical and they defer to others on if they should make a move so for for that I would say trust your instinct and you know don't worry about having to ask other people well should I do this or shouldn't I do this is it okay when I was young so I don't know how old you know I would go to my mom all the time and say well I don't know you think this is a good idea you know, I would constantly defer to her. Um, she just have to trust your, yourself. And, and that's something you can overcome. You can evolve. I mean, if we don't evolve, then we're just stagnant, right? So then you can help other second monad souls um, to overcome this deferring to others or whatever. Did that make any sense to you? You're welcome. Julian says, I think my tendency is to resist saying anyone encapsulates me, but rather to seek balance among them all. So my list of what I think of as is this and this is less expressed in me. Hmm. Yeah. It, it is a really hard concept to sit there and say, well, is this me or is this not me? I don't know. Um, you might want to run over it with somebody you know and see what they think. If it's easier to have someone else say, hey, you know, you're really this way and, you know, what is less expressed in you? Yeah. I mean, yes, I, I went through this and I wrote this and it seems to make some kind of sense, but in the, in the end, I'm not very good at judging myself. So, I, I will do, I will personally defer to other people for that. And say, well, what do you think? Uh, because I, I don't like to think of myself. I don't even like to write about myself, you know? I don't know if anyone else is like that, but, you know, I feel like I... I feel pompous if I start writing about myself like, well, I'm I this and I'm that. 
feel like I'm bragging. <laughs> so like I did this with, with my uh, Reiki, my Reiki rates. I went to my husband and I said, "Well, what do you think I'm worth? I mean, I I want to do the work and I want I want to help people heal, but I don't necessarily see myself as worth." Um, 300 an hour let's say and uh, because it's just not it's not the most important thing to me and, I mean yes money is important it pays bills it puts food on the table it gives me an SL but I'm more focused on work as opposed to you know what I think I'm worth I hope that made sense too I'm not having a very I'm confident day <laughs> So, I'm not sure if I'm making sense. This is a really strange concept. <laughs> Very interesting. And, and, you know, obviously when I made the comment, I'm so involved. It must be a nine. I, I was joking. I just, I didn't have to look into it more. Uh, the only thing I know is I'm not sick. Okay. <laughs> okay, fair enough. If you did, if you grasp nothing from this, as far as personally, <coughs> as long as you grasp this theory, all right, a theory on how things came to be, and how she evolved, and how she fell through the planes, because there's going to be, especially if you're Wiccan, there's going to be the, you know, the goddess fell through the seven planes in order to become human. She had to become human in order to become a great goddess. She had to understand everything. It's, uh, you know, starting at the bottoms, you know, with an empty cup, learning, comprehending it, and putting it in action. <laughs> Other than that, you know, it's not really needed. And, uh, but the Aradia story was really interesting. I found out that tied into this theory, um, which the tradition does a lot. They uh, they will reference other traditions and stuff. So we uh, have no more questions and answers, comments. Julian says, I'm curious how the system of team was created, but that sounds like a big subject for study. Number eight. <laughs> nice, nice reference there, William. Number eight. Um, yeah. <laughs> this is why I brought you guys the book of Aradia as the concept seems to come from the Italian Strega creation story. So, um, I guess if she was never got curious, we wouldn't even be here. I, I don't, maybe, maybe not, because she said to split herself from, you know, the male male perspective and the female perspective, um, and then once he ran amok across the universe in a big bolt of light. He uh, didn't want to go back. He's like, "Wee, you know, this is fun." So um, that really kind of upset her because then she wanted him back. And it seems like this is the story of our life. Not only the goddesses. Uh, in conclusion, I want to thank you all for coming to let me inundate your mind with information. And seriously, I do hope you enjoyed this class. And I would appreciate your feedback. I have a useful lot of survey, and I will post that for you now. In local chat, it is Survey Monkey. Yes, Survey Monkey is coming in handy. <laughs> there you go. And as always, be safe, well, and be blessed. I will be posting my citations here for you in local chat. Thank you for coming to class, and Joshi, if you would please. Uh, stop the recording. <laughs>